Hello, Divination, and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to highlight a hovered blurb module by blurring the outer ones with Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so let's start by creating a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages, click on add new. Now, of course, you can name this page whatever you want. And the technique I'm going to be showing you in this video can be used on an existing page or an existing section. All right, so let's give this page a title called Blur, and I'm gonna click on Use Divi Builder. Yeah, for this design, I am going to build this from scratch. So I'm gonna click here on Build from Scratch, and I'm just gonna close this for now because we need to go into our section settings and add our background color. So I'm gonna click here on Section Settings, click on Background, and I'm gonna click on this plus button to add my color. Now. Of course, you can use any colors that you want uh, that matches your design. But in my example here, I'm just using these uh, colors for this design. And if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using, I will link to the post uh, that has all the colors in the video description below. All right. So the next step here is to go to design and then I'm going to go to spacing because what we need to do here is to add some margins both to the top and also to the bottom. So since I need to add the same uh, value to the top and the bottom, I'm going to click here on this chain icon. And now we have equal margins. Next, we are also going to add the left and right margin. And again, this is going to be 2VW. There we go. Right. So the next part now is our padding. So I'm going to come over here. And this time we're going to add zero to the top and the bottom for our padding. And next, we need to add some rounded corners to our design. So to do that, we want to come over here to our border. And this is going to be 20 pixels. Now, notice that my chain is activated. So that means I'm going to get 20 pixels all around. So before you add the value, make sure that you add, I mean, you check the chain if it's set. All right, so I'm going to save this. And then the next part here is to add my column structure. And this is going to be three equal columns. Right, so now that I've added them, the next part is to go into our row settings because in our row settings is where we need to make further adjustments. So I'm just going to close this for now and then click here on this gear icon to go into my row settings. Next, we need to click here on design and then sizing. So the very first thing we need to do to do here is to equalize the column heights. Now, this, this just ensures that uh, when we add content into our columns, they're all going to maintain the same height based on the content. Okay, so the next step here is to set our width to 90%, and then our maximum width is going to be 1580 pixels. Right. So we're also going to continue on and add our minimum height. So I'm going to come over here and set this to 500 pixels. By default, it's set to auto, but we want to put an exact uh, amount, uh, value in there. Right. So the next step now is to align items centered. OK, so to do that, we're going to come over here to the advanced tab because this is CSS. So I'm going to come over here to custom CSS and this needs to be applied to the main element. So now you notice that uh, everything is going to be all centered here. So all items are going to be centered, which is fantastic. All right. So now that we have this, the next step now is to start adding our modules. So I'm going to save this, click here on this plus button. And our very first module here is going to be our blurb. And in fact, we're going to be using blurbs throughout all this. So I'm going to select it. And now that I have it on there, it's time now to go in and customize it. So here we have an image by default. Now we need an icon here. So I'm going to go in here and say yes to use icon. And we just need the plus. Now let's add a background here. So we need to use a gradient background, but we're going to use the background on hover. OK, so this is not going to be on the default state. So let's click here on this arrow pointing up and then click on the hover tab. So now let's add our first color. So I'm going to come over here. My first color here is going to be white. So I'm just going to paste it in here. And my second color is going to be blue. There we go. So over here, I'm going to add my start and end position. So my start here is going to be 20% and my end is going to be 20%. Okay, so there we go. So that's the design that we have so far. And make sure that this is also set to the linear, the, the linear gradient type. 
All right, so now the next step is to go into our icon settings. Now, before we do that, I just want to go in and just label this. So for our text here, I'm just going to call this blurb one. But of course, you can name it whatever you want. And I'm just going to leave the, um, the default text, text as it is. Right, so let's go and customize this icon. So I'm going to click here on design, image and icon. So for our icon color, we're going to add white to this. So I'm going to come over here, click on this eyedropper tool and... Just gonna add my color in here like that. Now for our icon to uh, be visible, we need to add a circle icon here. Okay, so let's add our circle icon color. We are going to set this to white as well. Now, of course, things may look very confusing here because as we were adding our hover state, we didn't change things back to the normal state. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna come back over here to my background. And you can see here I'm on hover, but if we go to the default, this is what this looks like. All right, so let's continue designing this on the default. All right, so the next step now is to uh, go to our image and icon placement, and we need to make sure that this is set to top, and then the icon alignment needs to be over to the left. Now, what we need to do next is to add our states on the hover. So let's go to our icon color here and click this little arrow and go to the hover tab. So now you see that um, we've switched over to the design that we had earlier on. So on the hover state here, what we're going to do is we're going to change the icon color. So you can also click here on recent colors and, and choose your colors that way. It's, it's faster to, uh, to get your colors that way. Okay, now let's add a circ our circle color. And again, we need to make sure that we click on this arrow, click on the hover tab, and add our circle color by clicking here on this icon. I'm going to paste my color in there and now you can see it's separated from the top background. So now that we've added that, we need to go in now and work on our colors for and uh, fonts for our text. So let's just switch over here to our normal state and let's go to our text. So I'm going to come over here to title text and we are going to use Source Sans Pro for this. So I'm going to click here and uh, search for Source, Source Sans Pro. Okay, here we go. And we also need to make this bold and also uppercase. All right, so that's looking great. Now with this, and the question is, what, how, how will this look on hover? So let's go ahead and take a look here. So I'm going to click here on this little icon. And on hover, you can see we have a dark background and our text here doesn't look great. So let's fix that right away by coming over here to my recent colors and choosing white. So now you can see that uh, it really stands out on this background. Okay, so moving on, uh, the next part we need to work on is the body text. So for the body font, we're going to be using uh, Open Sans. So let's go ahead and add that. So one quick way to go in and customize your text is to use this paintbrush icon. So I'm gonna click here. And then for my font, I'm going to search for it. It's going to be Open Sans. And there we go. And um, here we're going to also set our line height to 2EM. So that just enables us to read our text much easier. And just as we did before, we're going to come over here on our text color and uh, let's go on the hover tab. And as you can see here, it's quite difficult to read. So let's fix that by adding our color and it's gonna be white as well. All right, so now that I've added all that, the next step now is to really design this because as you can see, everything is way too close to the edges here. So we do need to add some padding to make it look great. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna come all the way down here to the spacing and this is where we need to add our top and bottom padding and we're gonna set this to 50 pixels. And I know right now we can't see it because we're not in the hover tab which has the colors. Okay, so let's do the same here. We are going to add 50, both to the left and the right. Now let's add a box shadow, right? So the um, type I'm gonna go with is the very first one here. And now you can see everything is very spaced out correctly and the design is much, much better. All right, but uh, we're not done yet because we still need to go in and add our values. So let's start with our, our box shadow blur strength. So for our blur strength, by default, it's set to 18. We need to bump it up to about 80. There we go. So now the shadow has been spread. And then for the box shadow spread strength, we're going to set this to minus 20. 
and we also need the color for our shadow here and i'm going to come over here to this eyedropper tool and i'm going to paste my values right here now make sure that when you add your values they're between the brackets otherwise it won't work so now while we're here on this box shadow we need to go to the color here and add the hover state so i'm going to click here on this little arrow go on uh, hover and add our color so i'm going to come over here and i'm just going to paste it in between the brackets okay so i've added my shadow color in there so the next step here is to add some uh, a css class because we're going to be using some um, a blur effect and this needs some css and some jquery code so while i'm here the next step here is to go to advanced and then i'm going to click here on css id and classes and the css class that we need is going to be called blur item and then we're going to save all right so we're not going to go through all the steps that we just went through to create another one the quickest way to um to work faster here is to just duplicate this twice and then just drag it into position here like that and then let's drag this one as well over to the right okay so all i need to do now is to just go in and this is blurb two and this one here is blurb three now in your case you could go in and even change the copy that we have in here to match you know your services or if this is your steps or whatever it is you can go in and and do that all right so now that i have all these three set you can also clone the entire row if you want to uh, add more of these blurbs so we can just do that by just clicking here on clone and as you can see here we've cloned pretty much everything all right so now that we've cloned all these the next step now is to so the next step now is to add a new row by clicking here on this plus button single column and we're just going to close this for now so for our row settings we're just going to adjust our top and bottom padding so let's go here in our row settings click on design spacing and i'm just going to add my padding here zero both to the top and the bottom and then we're going to add some code to the column so this code is going to be some jquery and css code so let's just close this for now and let's add our code module and here it is all right so the next step now is to paste my code but you need to go to the post which i'll link to in the show notes below to get the code so in this case i've already gone to the post and i'm just pasting my code in here and then we also need to add the other code so again i'm just going to add some spaces and paste the other code now for this code to work we need to add the tags and the tags are script so i'm just going to press enter here and uh, add this bracket key like that and then i'm just going to copy the end part and paste it right here at the end like that and this one here is style so make sure we go in and type in style and again we're going to copy the ending code i mean we're going to cut it and add it at the end like that okay so this should pretty much resolve everything so we're going to save this now i'm going to save this page one more time we are going to exit the visual builder and then take a quick look and see if this is working there we go so now you can see we have this beautiful effect when i hover over it the ones on the side here are blurred and the one that i'm my mouse is on is in focus so this is a really really cool feature and you can start using this in your designs so there you have it thank you all for watching if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms by doing so you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials until next time thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video